I'm Bonnie Dietlifs. I'm the owner of the Nuking International One Loft Race. The, the name is the Dinuking Million, Million Rand Pigeon Race. And for guys that don't know what the One Loft Race is, I want to tell you in short, a One Loft, a one loft Race is a race that has found a place at a certain place where somebody put up a loft and they encourage people to send their birds here from all over in South Africa, even from aboard, they can send pigeons here. And uh, we home them here, we care for them, we train them, and then we, le we raise the pigeons for prize money. So one loft is uh, for only for pigeons for one year. I think that's where the name from one loft come. A pigeon can only participate participate in a one loft for one year as a young youngster it must have, must be a youngster it must have that year rings or the year before but it must be still a year a yearling pigeon and it must come to the loft as a baby or not very old so it can be owned here what is the advantage for raising in a one loft the advantage is uh, you can test your pigeons against some of the best pigeons from our country and aboard. You can test your pigeons here um, and to see the, uh, the, the biggest advantage for a one loft is all the pigeons come to, to one loft, not to different lofts. So there's no, uh, the wind has no factor, the position where the guy stays no factor. All the birds come here, the first bird over the trap wins the race, the second bird is second and the other birds is third. The other advantages is if you only want to go for one loft, you can you don't need to breed a lot of pigeons. So you're not gonna raise them yourselves. So you breed just enough pigeons for the one lot, you enter them there and you you can see how your pigeons compete and you can also test your pigeons. So that's the main uh, advantages for racing in a one loft. It's very exciting. You come visit on race days. You can even come on training days, come see the pigeons are coming and it's all, all the hard work at your home. If you race for yourself, you don't have with a one loft. You just breed your pigeons and you send them to a one loft. Our race was established in 2010. We started. We had the uh, me. I had a partner at that stage. He was my brother-in-law, Anton van der Merwe. We were together when we started the loft. Uh, this was part of his uh, uh, a small farm that he had here. The rest of it's on the other way, other side of the road. So we started the loft here. And that was in 2010 when we built, started building the loft and the loft had to be finished in uh, that year in October before our intake started in October for the next year. The process to, to start a one loft is just, you must register a one loft and uh, then you can, you must build the lofts and get everything ready. Then you, you need to get, if you want to get pigeons from a board, you must get uh, agents to help you to get the pigeons into South Africa. In South Africa, you can work with agents as well in different cities. They can collect the pigeons, send them here. Uh, so all those trouble, the brochures, your rules, regulations, everything you must put on, onto a brochure. You must create a website and you must also link to uh, 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 Benzing. You must uh, get uh, the software from Benzing and they, uh, they help you with the software and all the, the clocks and pads and everything you need to clock the pigeons. What makes our loft different from other one lofts, there's not much really that makes it different. What one one thing that is what's different of most lofts is the net that we use to home the birds. You've seen the net here. All the pigeons coming coming here, they go directly on, into underneath the loft every day for two weeks. 
if they're young, two weeks is enough. And then they, after two weeks, they go out to the outside. The half of the courtyard is under net and the other half is open. So the birds on the other side, at this stage, is about seven, over 700 pigeons on the other side. And this side is uh, about 250, roughly, but still under, net, under the net. And that's one of the differences. The other difference, I think, we communicate, uh, we're very, we're communication with our clients is very good. We, everything that happens at Urban Loft, we put on our website and on our WhatsApps. And uh, if a pigeon dies, we contact the guy and we tell him your pigeons died, you can replace him. If a pigeon gets lost around the loft, we let him know. Even if a pigeon is sick and it stays sick, he doesn't want to recover, we also contact him. If the pigeon, all the results came up, uh, we, put, we with a website where all the pedigrees go into the website that we can get from the pigeons. Uh, so the communication is very good. All the, all the Every pigeon are being sold afterwards on auctions. We've got the main auction here on our Barcelona day, that's two weeks after the final race. And then the, after that, we've got about, every year we've got about between 20 and 25 auctions all over South Africa. All those results and everything are posted on our website. So the guys can see who bought the pigeons for how much they bought them and everything. So our communication with our clients is good. Other thing that's, I think might my is a little bit different is maybe is the training and the care that we give to get the pigeons. We care very well for the pigeons and our training I think is very good because our statistics for the amount of pigeons that goes to the first race and goes to the last race are very high and even the pigeons that goes to the final race. Uh, the returns are very high. I will show you the statistics. Some guys said, a lot of guys said to me, this is worldwide, if you go on statistics, it's the best, best loft in the world, or close to the best. Because our returns of pigeons, we don't lose very much pigeons. And our pigeons race to the loft. Our pigeons fly by our one loft, like they fly in, your, in a combine. There's not, you, you'll never rarely see by us that the pigeon, one pigeon came say four o'clock and then at, an, at closing of that, that day, there's only three or five or six pigeons back. Our pigeons, if they come, they come very good, they're racing. So that's what I, I like. I wanted my, my goal in, in this, in our loft is the the guys must know that we're looking very well at the, we, we care for the pigeons, we look very well at them and we train them, make sure they fit and everything. So they have a very good chance. So everybody will have a good chance. The improvement of the lofts over the years, there's not much has changed on the loft itself, but on the infrastructure here at the side, there's changed uh, quite a few things. We later we we had in the beginning we had to put up on a marquee stand where the people can come and watch the race. Now we have facilities where the people can come. We prize there with toilets here for men and women, and then we've got this uh, containers and everything to help us here to do a better job. The amount of birds that can be a uh, can accommodate here is, is 1,800. The daily routine of the birds is basically like the race from, from my own loft. I'm still racing in our, in our union here in Pretoria. Uh, the birds every morning, they, the lofts are cleaned. We don't train them now at this stage because there's now in the moltings, there's now, the molting is now on, in, on its peak, so we don't, and we also pull, have pulled the feathers. We've pulled all, all the pigeons that's not gonna go through, we pulled the last two, and uh, to, 
to ensure that they come to the race, that the last two flights won't be blood, you know, blood flights. So we pull them, so now they're not in a good, they can't even fly, some of them can't even fly up. So we don't just open them now and they, they walk outside and some of them can fly. We didn't pull every, the pigeons that we don't need to pull the flies, they, they can fly and some of them fly. But they don't fly a long time now because we don't train them at this stage. Later on, we will uh, train them early morning. Not too early, when they finish with cleaning the loft, we'll chase them out and then we'll come in and then they will feed also on that side. And we train them two times, two times a day. And uh, then in the afternoon, four o'clock, they, they, we feed them again. But in the afternoon, they will train that side. They will train before they come in to feed. And then our, our intake, starts in October and it, and it goes through the end of March. But the, our format of our, our races this year, we changed the whole format of all our races. We always, the, few, the first 11 years, of the past 11 years, we had only five races, four races and the final. And then we had two weeks later, the Barcelona race and the big money race. Now we've changed the format. We're gonna have eight races this year. And they start at 300 kilometers and they go up every week further till the second last race, they come back to 300 and the last race is 724 kilos. And then two weeks later is the Barcelona and the big money race. We've, we, we're using a vet, Dr. Robert Conradi. He's not coming to us, he's, he's testing pigeons in the race time every Tuesday here in Pretoria. So if we've got a problem, we take some pigeons for him to test, to see if there's any uh, pigeon diseases they might have, and then we can, you know, then we can doctor them for that. And uh, if it's necessary, I phone him. If we've got a problem and I want to ask him, I can phone him, and I can even ask him to come here if, it's, if it need be. So we use him. The requirements for Joining the race, you must have pigeons rung with uh, sampu rings. It must have sampu rings. It must be a yearling pigeon, so it must be that year's uh, ring. Or like now, we're racing with last year's 22 rings this year, but there's still babies now in January that the guys can get rings for the one lofts. So there's some babies coming in with 23. So our, our season, if it's a 23 season, we've got 22 and 23 rings. Next year we will have 23 and 24 rings. So you must have pigeons rung with those rings. And uh, you, uh, you must bring the pigeons here. You can have somebody bringing them here, but you must enter them and you, you must uh, abide by the rules of our 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 loft. Our entry fees for this season is five thousand rand a, a pigeon, and you can send up to twelve pigeons. You must make teams. The team is twelve pigeons, and it will cost you sixty thousand rand for twelve pigeons. And you can, for every three pigeons you send, you can send a reserve. So if you, if you send twelve pigeons, you got four reserves. The reserves cost you nothing, and you can, they can, you can use the reserves to replace birds that get, get lost. Guys can send as much watch, they can send one pigeon, they can send two pigeons, they can send, they can send as much pigeons as they want to, but they, they can't send more than 12. They can send more than 12, but that must, must be a new team. So a guy can send team one, you can send 12 plus four, six, plus four reserves, and you can send the second team with, 12, with four reserves, and even a third team. You can send as many teams you want to, but you can't send, you can't put more than 12 pigeons in a team with four reserves. The guys that don't, that only send two or three or four pigeons, they can go with friends or uh, people they know, they can make it, they go, can go together to form a syndicate, but they don't need to. They can race with their three or four pigeons in a team 
if they don't want to join a syndicate. But they can join a syndicate for a case of the team competition. Only the team competition, that's why we're making teams for the rest of the competitions is for the individual birds. So if you're in a, in a syndicate and your bird win the ace bird competition, the money will be yours. The prize money, we, 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 we will pay between three and 3.8 million. It, it depends on how many birds get, we get entered, but the prize money will not be less than three million. The challenges that we get from the past season, the, the biggest challenge that we have is all this, uh, what do you call it? You know, all this wires from the electricity, high tension wires all over the uh, roads. You can't, you can't liberate 1,000 or one, more than 1,000 pigeons close to in Pretoria or, or on the other side of Pretoria or even up on the other side of, of, Johanna, of Johannesburg. There's too many, many wires and if the pack is still big and they came to that wires, they, a lot of them are going to hurt themselves. So the, 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 the challenge is we must liberate them in small, small bunches up to at least 100 kilometers. And even then, on the 100 kilometers from here down to Cape Town on the race, race direction, there's a lot of wires in that 100 kilometers. So we can only liberate them then on 100 kilometers if it's a day where there's no winds or even a light wind from the back, so they go up high, then we can liberate them together. The, the entrants that enter the pigeons here, they want to see the training, the, the results of the training. Of course, they want to see how, how the pigeons are faring. And uh, it's very difficult for us. We don't want to liberate them with a headwind. Even on 100 kilometers, we're going to have problems. So it's, uh, it's only safe from about 140, 50 kilos up. Then they break, they break in smaller packs and there's not, not so many pigeons together when they, when they eat the wires. Otherwise, there wasn't really big challenges. The big, maybe the biggest challenge in, in the one loft is to get the pigeons in the, in the right condition for the races. Uh, so that comes with uh, experience, how to do it, to get them ready and to keep them ready and to have them racing. Pigeons, the readiness for, for this year, they're in the mold now, they're starting, the oldest birds coming in are start, uh, starting looking good. The young, youngest ones, you didn't start now, that's now only starting molting. So the, the biggest challenge now, the readiness is now that we, we want to get the feathers in the best condition we can. Uh, the feathers must be sulky, uh, soft, and pliable and not uh, dry. How do, how do one loft racing affect the fanciers? I think it makes it possible for fanciers to participate longer. Uh, the, all South African, most South African fanciers, a uh, high percentage of South African fanciers are 60 years and older. And they're starting leaving the, leaving the sport because to catch pigeons, to feed them, to clean the lofts, to take them out. It's a, it's a lot of work. So some of them, a lot of them stops racing in their clubs and they, they keep on racing with one lofts. So I think it helps in a, in a big way so that we don't lose fanciers, they can go longer. They don't need to have a lot of lofts and a lot of pigeons. They can have a few pairs and they can breed for one loft and they can, can enjoy it. And they don't have to do all the work and it will cost him even less than it will cost him to raise himself. But uh, I think for a pigeon fancier, it's much better for him to raise in a club it's uh, it's the ultimate. It's 
to, to compete against guys in your club and you want to win and you test your pigeons and you, you uh, train them yourself and you can do whatever you want. So I don't think that will ever stop. I think in one way or other it will go on, but uh, one loss will are becoming all more and more and uh, there's more guys joining the one lots. With us, the pigeons race. Normally, we can't say it's always going to be so, but normally by us, the pigeons race like a normal race. And uh, the statistics say that uh, it's one of the best lofts. And uh, our entry fees is not very high. And uh, our prize money, uh, as I said, I think it's the second highest in South Africa. Thank you.